You know the deal. Complete the mission, you get 10 years off your sentence. You fail to follow my orders in any way, and I detonate the explosive device in the base of your skull. Okay, full disclosure up front. I haven't read too much Suicide Squad prior to Future State. I've never been super interested in the concept or the characters outside of books like Superman or Justice League, so I haven't really dabbled much in their own books. That changed after reading the Future State book and enjoying it more than I expected. Likewise, I have long been a fan of Connor Kent's Superboy, especially since Jeff Johns' phenomenal Teen Titans run. And so, with Superboy joining the Suicide Squad under the same writer as the Future State book, I figured I would give it a chance. And I say all of this to clarify where I am coming from, as my experience with the book could understandably be different from those who have been reading the books for some time. So, with all of that out of the way, what was my experience with the first two issues of Infinite Frontier era of Suicide Squad? Well, with the upcoming James Gunn movie, The Suicide Squad, it's understandable that we would get a comic book series that ties into it in some way. That comes primarily in the presence of Peacemaker as the leader of Task Force X, aka the Suicide Squad. Having never read any other iterations of the character, I can only base my opinion off of what is presented here. And, I have to say, I like him for the role. His personality and his motivations fit with the theme and the tone of the book, and I appreciate the idea of having the leader of the team more or less on the same page as Amanda Waller. We don't get a lot of development of who this man is in these first two issues, but we get just enough to understand that he has a warped sense of justice, justifying breaking laws and getting his hands dirty in order to achieve a goal he believes to be noble. Likewise, the inclusion of Superboy is handled well thus far. Connor Kent maintains his personality, and he's not modified to shoehorn him into the Suicide Squad. He continues to be the same heroic character we already know, working with Amanda Waller against his will. This feels like the same character from the Teen Titans that I remember, not the regressive Young Justice display we got from Bendis, all the way down to the iconic, to me, jeans and t-shirt costume. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of character development in these two issues. We are presented with the basics of Connor's situation, and that's about it. I have no doubt that this will be developed further down the road, but for now, it's surface-level introductory stuff and little else. The implications of Waller going beyond the normal purview of Task Force X by capturing a superhero and manipulating him into doing her bidding has a lot of potential. This could have immense payoff, setting up the Suicide Squad for stories that would have major ramifications throughout the DCU. This could be building to Amanda Waller prepping for a significant confrontation with some sort of invasion or big bad guy, and something along those lines later on down the road, justifying her actions by being the only one to see the threat coming. Or she could be reaching beyond what is right and good, delving into malevolent, despot territory, seeking to overthrow world governments, and essentially seeking global dominations for what she believes to be the greater good. I fully expect clashes with the Justice League, heavy questions of morality and where the lines should be drawn. What this story could be is immense, and only time will tell if they follow any of these threads to their logical conclusions. Unfortunately, both of these issues combined feel like less than a single first issue should be for me. Two issues devoted to a prison break of a single character right at the start of a brand new run feels unnecessarily stretched out for me. We get an introduction of an altogether unfamiliar Suicide Squad, only to have two of them unceremoniously wiped off the board right away. Now sure, this is a technique that is familiar, meant to showcase how disposable the team is, but I don't really feel like it has the desired effect when we don't really know any of these characters. Personally, I would have built them up a little bit more before killing them off maybe saving the deaths for a few issues in, lest it feels cheap and insignificant as it does here. Because, yeah, a couple characters die, but they are so forgettable that I can't even recall who they were while writing this immediately after having read the issues. 
And that lack of character development continues with virtually every character on show here. This seems to be a common theme throughout much of the Infinite Frontier so far, including books like Teen Titans Academy and Justice League, wherein the writers introduce a large cast and as a result don't have the space to allow for any of the characters to really breathe. Now, it's acceptable for a book like Justice League because we're familiar with most of those characters already, so we don't need to develop Superman and Wonder Woman within the pages. We know them well enough and can instead focus on other characters. But with a book like Suicide Squad, particularly a new era that introduces an almost entirely new cast, juggling a large number of unknowns who don't get much development makes for a book that is not only relatively shallow, but also difficult to care about. I have no attachment to pretty much any of these characters, except for, you know, Superboy and Amanda Waller. So. I don't really care what happens with any of them. And the story winds up feeling like entirely set up, which isn't entirely bad as it is the start of a brand new run, but it doesn't really give a good sense of what the actual story will be. Instead of showing us where the narrative might go and hinting at greater things to come, the majority of the page count is focused on action and reintroducing us to the basic conceit of the Suicide Squad. I want to build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. If they get caught, we throw them under the bus. And sure, this can be good for new readers, as many won't be familiar with the concept outside of the movies, but it isn't necessary to put aside plot in order to do so. There are details seeded that have the potential for later payoff, such as the aforementioned issue involving Superboy, but there's no guarantee it will play out as I mentioned. As it is, after the first two issues, I still have no idea what the story will be about going forward, aside from Amanda Waller continuing to build a more significant Suicide Squad for... reasons. And that's much of the problem I have with these first two issues. I don't know what this book is about, where it's going, or really have anything specific drawing me back. I like Superboy, but that isn't enough to make me interested in the book, as I don't even know what they're going to do with him. Amanda Waller is doing things differently, is not enough of a hook for me. And I feel like that's all that has really been showcased here thus far. It could very well build into something much more interesting, and I suspect it likely will. But the start of a story should give you a taste of the story to come. As it is, this doesn't feel particularly like the start of a story, but rather more as just kind of a precursor to the story to come. And so, in that regard, this fails to convince me to keep reading. Whereas the Future State story told a complete tale with a specific purpose, the Infinite Frontier era thus far doesn't seem to have the same sense of direction. Then again, that could also be attributed to my lack of interest in the core concept. Perhaps this is in keeping with the spirit of past series, where it could be right in line with what people have come to expect from the Suicide Squad. I can't really say for certain. All I really know is, as someone who isn't overly familiar with the series prior to Future State, the first two issues of the Infinite Frontier era of Suicide Squad fails to grab my interest. I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad, it's just really not for me. Now, were I writing the same story, I would have condensed these two issues down into one expediting the prison break and reducing the number of characters introduced in so short an amount of time. I also would have done a little more to tease the greater story being developed in order to hook readers and give them a taste of what's to come. Do more to convince those who aren't already fans of the Suicide Squad that this is a book worth reading, rather than simply showing Task Force X get into shenanigans. Introducing Superboy and the tease of the crossover with Teen Titans Academy is a start in doing this, but for me, it's just not enough to convince me to come back for more. I need more plot than a simple recruitment drive. I may check back in after a few more issues have come out, maybe pick up the first trade and see if it reads better in collected format, but for now, I'm not going to be continuing with the book. We're all going to die. I hope so. Oh, for God's sake. Be sure to help me out by hitting like and subscribe, leave a comment to let me know your thoughts, 
And until next time, this is Uncle Joel saying, stay tangible. <laughs>